Hello and welcome. We are Two Button Brass, a brass quintet based out of Los Angeles, California. And today we're excited to present to you our show, LGBTQ Plus Composers in Classical Music. We curated today's program in collaboration with the City of West Hollywood as a virtual installment in the Artful Distancing Project, showcasing the extraordinary music of LGBTQ plus composers. While we're not able to share this beautiful music with you in person, we'd like to invite you to listen and engage with some truly inspirational composers from the past 150 years. You may recognize the name of some of these composers, and you might also learn about some new ones. Our goal with today's concert is to highlight the struggle and the perseverance of all of these artists through their musical masterworks. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Thank you for being here and supporting the arts. Born to a family in Brooklyn, New York, Jennifer Higdon has established herself as one of the most successful composers of her generation. She has been praised for her rhythmic vitality, interesting coloration, and sensitivity to nuance and timbre, with her many works being among the most frequently performed pieces today. She did not begin composing until the age of 21, and it is because of this she was able to develop an entirely unique compositional style. Her works can be described as inclusive, accessible, and embracing to performers and listeners alike. And it is these qualities that have led to her many accolades, including a Pulitzer Prize in music in the year 2010. Fanfare Quintet is a short yet vibrant piece. Higdon's writing for brass instrumentation may seem unconventional, but she is able to capture a unique color by subverting the practices of traditional brass writing. It is through this she is able to transform the brass quintet into something entirely her own. When examining composers of the LGBTQ community, Tchaikovsky is not usually the first name to come to mind. This is primarily due to the setting in which he found himself and the heavy censorship of his life that took place as a result. As a nationally recognized Russian composer in the 1800s, he could not be open with his lifestyle for fear of persecution. And he's one of the many unfortunate examples of discrimination LGBTQ people have historically faced. 
A forward to the collection of his letters reads, the central taboo concerning Tchaikovsky's life has been his homosexuality. In the eye of the authorities, it would have been unthinkable to accept that Russia's national treasure was a homosexual. Regardless, Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake is one of the most influential ballets of all time, and the selection we are performing today depicts a scene in which the main character and his companions observe a lake shimmering in the moonlight as they see a flock of swans glide gently across the water. Little do they know that these swans are about to transform into beautiful maidens before their very eyes. For our next piece, we'll be downsizing a bit to play the Sonata for Horn, Trumpet, and Trombone by Francis Poulenc. Poulenc was one of the most influential French composers of the early 20th century. He led a life of rebellion and resilience, combating the Nazis at the age of 40 while serving in the French military and living under their occupation until after France's surrender. As an openly gay man, he was constantly in danger of arrest and deportation under Nazi rule, but he still managed to rebel through his music. He spent most of the war performing recitals with Pierre Bernanc and would frequently incorporate verses from French poets popular with the resistance movement, as well as incorporating French national themes wherever he could get away with it. The Sonata for Horn, Trumpet, and Trombone is one of my favorite pieces of music, and I am truly excited to share it with you. Poulenc has such a highly crafted compositional style, and there are so many different emotions conveyed in this piece. There's some dissonant moments that create comedy and quirkiness, but there's also some really beautiful melodies that offer a tone of nostalgia and joy. Thank you. 
Leonard Bernstein is a composer whose musical achievements are truly legendary and need little introduction. However, what may be less known about him is that he struggled greatly with his sexual identity while working in a field that would penalize him greatly for it. The pressure to hide his sexuality was intense, and he was advised by his own mentor to hide that part of himself if he hoped to secure a major conducting appointment. Despite his incredible skill, his career could have been jeopardized due to the conservative nature of orchestra boards of the time. He would go on to marry an actress, but this does not mean that Bernstein was bisexual. Like many gay men of his generation, he was a devoted husband and father in public and a homosexual behind the scenes. West Side Story was one of the first musicals to explore a serious subject with wide social implications. More than just the story of the tragic lives of ordinary people in a small, grubby section of New York, it was concerned with urban violence, juvenile delinquency, clan hatred, and young love. Set to an amazing score, this is a story that has and will continue to stand the test of time as one of the greatest works ever made.
Having completed composition training overseas with Paris' premier pedagogues, Aaron Copland returned home to New York City just before the Great Depression wrecked Wall Street. The Depression devastated members of the lost generation, but Copland entrenched himself within creative circles insulated from the influence of the economic downturn that befell millions of Americans. Falling in step with the likes of cultural icons like Ansel Adams, Georgia O'Keeffe, and Walker Evans, Copeland cultivated an artistic expression containing the ideals of American democracy, drawing inspiration from popular folk and jazz music idioms. The resulting vernacular style coined by Copeland quickly established him as the spokesperson for a whole generation of con contemporary composers. The resulting art was ne uh, wasn't necessarily abstract nor modernist, but rather accessible and uniquely American. 
The Promise of Living comprises the Act One finale of Copland's 1954 opera, The Tenderland. Within this excerpt from the opera, you can hear some of the cornerstone characteristics of Copland's uniquely American style of composition. Slow changing harmonies and wide intervals that evoke the expansiveness of the American landscape. A simple hymn melody, Zion's Walls, is distinguishable. Entwined with other original material, the hymn offers a sense of hope in the face of great loss, resonating with Americans having just emerged from depression and war.
Samuel Barber is an American composer who is considered by many to be one of the most expressive representatives of 20th century classical music. His uniquely beautiful approach to composition led to his enduring relevance and popularity. As a young man, Barber was an incredible triple prodigy as a composer, a vocalist, and a pianist. And he had the opportunity to study his art at the Curtis Institute of Music, where he met his partner in both life and profession, Giancarlo Monotti. Our next piece is perhaps what Barber is most famous for, the Adagio for Strings. Since its premiere in 1938, this piece has remained a fixture of American classical music. The piece is full of dramatic tension and intense passion that clearly demonstrates Barber's ability as a composer. We hope you enjoy. <laughs> 